What's up guys, my name is UH4, and I, oh, it's UH4, and welcome to KOTAR 1! I know, I just finished KOTAR 2, and it's weird that I'm playing KOTAR 1 after, it's like a backward things of doing things. Yeah, I know I'm weird that way. But yeah, we're playing KOTAR 1, baby, the OG! I finally found a way to fix the audio for the recording and stuff. And yeah, we're here! Tried it out a little bit, but we're gonna make a new character, so yeah. And hmm, we already did Star Wars theme opening. Let's how about let's do Duel of the Fates? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, uh, scout and um, custom character. You know what? Uh, I'm gonna no, 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 no. no. At least I'll show you what I would look like. Hmm, which one's closest to me? The closest one I look like. Yeah, I think this one. But yeah, okay. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. yeah, I'm just gonna skip all of this boring stuff, and I'm gonna cut to where I actually made a character already. Bye. And we're back. We finally made our dude. Oh wait, damn copyright music. I gotta mute all of this. Oh yeah, by the way, our name is Matthias Kenobi. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, lame name, but what can I do, man? What can I do? Just gonna shut up. by a Sith battle fleet. The Endar Spire is under attack. Hurry up, we don't have much time. I'm Trask Olgo, Ensign with the Republic fleet. I'm your bunkmate here on the Endar Spire. We work opposite shifts. I guess that's why you haven't seen me before. Now hurry up, we have to find Bastil. We have to make sure she makes it off the ship alive. Bastil is the commanding officer on the Endar Spire. Well, not an officer, really. But she's the one in charge of this mission. One of our primary duties is to guarantee her survival in the event of an enemy attack. You swore an oath just like everyone else on this mission. Now it's time to make good on that oath. I heard what everyone's saying about you. You've explored the farthest reaches of the galaxy. You've visited planets I've never even heard of. People with your skills and abilities are hard to find. It's no wonder the Republic recruited you for this mission. But now's the time to prove yourself. I know you're a scout and not a soldier. But Bastila needs all troops at her side during this attack. So hurry up and grab your gear. You need to suit up so we can get out of here. Okay, dude. That will totally be in the ending and 
all the way in our journey. <laughs> totally. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah, Bastilla, baby! Bastilla makes this game worth it. Makes this game worth it. You know, play it over and over again. Just get in love with Bastilla over and over again. Oh, wait. Uh, let's talk okay, to him. Okay, let's move out. We should stick together. You'll have more success with a party than on your own. Because yeah, this, this uh, there. But don't worry, I've got the override codes. You'll have to use me to unlock the door. Okay, sometimes the dialogue don't appear immediately, now and that's gonna be. You better take the lead again. There we go again. That's gonna be a pain in the butt when aliens speak, so. Yeah, I don't really have a solution this for that, now. so. Bear with me. We can't hold out long against their firepower. All hands to the bridge! That was Karth contacting us on our portable communicators. He's one of the Republic's best pilots. He's seen more combat than the rest of the Empire Spires crew put together. If he says things are bad, you better believe it. We have to get to the bridge to help defend Bastila. There's a map of the Endar Spire and a copy of Karth's message in your electronic journal, just in case we get separated. Don't worry, dude. I know how to play the game. Don't you even worry about it, baby. Unlock this. These Sith must be the advanced boarding party for the Republic. For the Republic. Damn, this is so nostalgic. Oh, I love Quarter One. Quarter One is probably my third favorite game. Man, so good, so good. I mean, I like Quarter Two better, but. Doesn't mean Culture One's not good. It's like the best. First time I played it, I'm like, oh man, I can't return to normal crappy games ever again. Because I just played one of the best games ever. This would be my favorite because, you know, Culture One is the only Culture game I played. And then I played Culture Two and I lost my mind. Ah, uh, you chunguses. Oops, oops, oops. Uh. Damn the burps! The burps are back, guys! The burps are back! Classic PH4 man. Classic Metal Box. Which um how should I say this? Interface, I guess? Which interface do you like more? Coder 1 or Coder 2? Me uh Coder 2. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Plus I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you later. Just wait. Uh, remains scavenging some dead people. Totally normal. <laughs> They're your allies, so it's okay. Then again, see there. Just remains, but it's already empty. It doesn't say empty. That's pretty cruddy. Epic battle! Very early 2000s. Like, damn, so, so nostalgic. If you like Star Wars and you like more Star Wars stuff, then Kotor is the game. If you just want to feel like you're in Star Wars, the immersion. I think Kotor 1 beats Kotor 2 in terms of immersion in the Star Wars world. Because Star Wars, I mean, Kotor 2. It's pretty dark. It's a pretty dark adventure. You don't really feel the glee and joy that you feel when you watch the classic OG Star Wars. But here, you feel like you're playing a classic Star Wars tale. It's just so good. All the drama. All the action. The lovable characters. It's in culture too. <laughs> I don't know if the characters are lovable. More like... Um, scumbags who became Jedi, so... <laughs> but then again, Mitra Surik is a really interesting main character. But, the main character in KOTOR 1 is really interesting. Fan favorite for sure, fan favorite. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, shh, You people who already know, who are watching Nostalgia, don't spoil them, okay? Dark Jedi. Ah! 
Jedi accompanying Bastila. Damn, they could have used her help. Damn, what a weak ass Jedi. <laughs> Die because of explosion? <laughs> if I was a Jedi, I would probably die as well. I ain't no Skywalker. I ain't no Mace. You. Oh yeah. In the beginning, you don't start as a Jedi here. Unlike a Kotor 2. Which is why we're gonna stay level 2 until we go to the next planet after the first planet. Because that's when we actually become a Jedi with our Jedi training and stuff. Yeah, pretty badass stuff, really. Becoming a Jedi here, I must say, is more special <laughs> than in Kotor 2. Because in Kotor 2, you just start off as a Jedi. It's an overpowered Jedi, but here, start as a crap soldier, scout, or scoundrel. Just beyond that door. Better equip your melee weapon. There isn't much room on the bridge, and it's suicide to use a blaster in close quarters. Should equip a melee weapon too. Either that or I'll have to stay back and use my blaster. Okay, mate. Okay. You will be my best friend for sure. You will totally be my super best friend though forever and ever. Yeah. You will stay with me by my side forever till the end of the journey. And beyond! Yeah, yeah, man, I know. I don't want to fight, bro! You don't have to tell me. I mean you don't know that I know, but I know that I know. That doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, welcome to the channel. And if you are new, <laughs> welcome! Here, grab some cookies, grab some UH4 milk. Okay, I, I didn't mean it that way, please. Don't you even dare make any dirty remarks. We are a family-friendly channel, bitch. I mean, girl, dog. <laughs> uh, family-friendly indeed. Okay, let's. What the? What's happening? Hey! What the? Uh, okay, um. What the? L let me just fix this. See ya! Okay! <laughs> we fixed it, baby! Let's go! Come on, let's go! <laughs> something behind here. I'll try to hold him off. You get to the escape pods. Go! No! Dude! Oh, what's your name again? I mean, <laughs> I will remember. What the? Don't. What? Why is YouTube notifying me with this crap? I'm not even subscribed to that, dude. <laughs> Man, YouTube, you're crazy. What? This is Whenever Tonto I just Nassi on your personal communicator, <laughs> I'm tracking your position through the Endar Spire's life support systems. Basilisk escape pod is away. You're the last surviving crew member on the Endar Spire. Now I can't wait for you much longer. You have to get to the escape pods. Don't worry, Karth, you handsome hunk. Yeah, anyways. Whenever I just accidentally click a video or something. Then YouTube just keeps on recommending me random channels. I don't know what's weird, man. Does that happen to you as well? On YouTube, you know? Anything like that? No, yes? Or am I just weird? I just phone to you. Whatever. Let's just kill some Sith to fix everything. <laughs> oh, Sith Trooper. Man. I wish there was Sith Troopers in the Clone Wars era. Well, that wouldn't really make sense because it's the rule of doing stuff. What do they look like, actually? Will, will they just be like black clothes? I mean, their armor. These guys. Technic uh, what is the... <laughs> Damn, I don't want to get cancelled. <laughs> What's the nationality of... Um... What's his name again? Jacker of Django Fett? Whatever, man. Jacker of Django Fett. What's his nationality again? Uh, I don't want to be insensitive. You could reprogram the damage assault droid to help you if you have enough repair parts. Or you could use computer spikes to slice into the terminal and use the Endar Spire security systems against the Sith. <laughs> Don't you worry, Kart. I am a hacker in real life. Actually, kind of, because I'm 
90 graduates, so technically I can hack stuff, but I don't know, I'm not smart enough. Let's just hack this and kill people! <laughs> Man, I wish that happens in real life. I mean, no, hopefully not. Actually, that would be horrifying. Yeah, hopefully not. Just Louise, imagine your laptop just kills you or something. That'd be horrific! I'm imagining it right now. Imagine my phone just explode in my face. That'd be kind of awesome, actually. But also painful, so... Huh. You've made it just in time. There's only one active escape pod left. Come on, we can hide out on the planet below. I'm a soldier with Republic, like you. We're the last two crew members left in the Ender Spire. Basil's escape pod's already gone, so there's no reason for us to stick around here and get shot by the Sith. Now, come on, there'll be time for questions later. Okay, baby. Let's load the insides. No, I mean... No, not like that! Ugh. I'm Ugh, guys, really? Good to see you up instead of thrashing about in your sleep. You must have been having one hell of a nightmare. I was wondering if you were ever going to wake up. I'm Karth, one of the Republic soldiers from the Endar Spire. I was with you in the escape pod. Do you remember? I'm not surprised. You took a serious blow to the head. You're probably having all kinds of strange dreams. I wouldn't worry too much about it. I've been slipping in and out of consciousness for a couple of days now, so I imagine you're pretty confused about things. But try not to worry. We're safe. At least for the moment. We're in an abandoned apartment on the planet of Terrace. We were banged up pretty bad when our escape pod crashed, but luckily I wasn't seriously hurt. I was able to drag you away from our crash site in all the confusion, and I stumbled into this abandoned apartment. By the time the Sith arrived on the scene, we were long gone. Terrace is under Sith control. Their fleet is orbiting the planet. They've declared martial law, and they've imposed a planet-wide quarantine. But I've been in worse spots. I saw on your service records that you understand a remarkable number of alien languages. It's pretty rare in a raw recruit, but it should come in handy while we're stranded on a foreign world. There is no way the Republic will be able to get anyone through the Sith blockade to help us. If we're gonna find Bastila and get off this planet, we can't rely on anybody but ourselves. That smack to your head did more damage than I thought. Bastila's a Jedi. She was with the strike team that killed Darth Revan, Malak's Sith Master. Bastil is the key to the whole Republic war effort. The Sith must have found out that she was on the Ender Spire and set an ambush for us in this system. I believe Bastila was on one of the escape pods that crashed down here in Terrace. For the sake of the Republic war effort, we have to try and find her. While you were out, I did some scouting around. There are reports of a couple of escape pods crashing down into the Undercity. It's probably a good place to start. But the Undercity's a dangerous place. We don't want to go there unprepared, and it won't do Basil any good if we go and get ourselves killed. I'll tell you whatever I can, though I, I don't know how much help it'll be. Everything I know about Malik is pretty much common knowledge. He escaped the trap that killed Darth Revan, his Sith Master. With Revan's death, Malik became the new Dark Lord. It's obvious that Malik's a ruthless tyrant who will crush anyone who stands in his way, just like Revan was. Experience has shown that the Sith won't stop until the Republic lies in ruins. Malak and his Sith don't respect anything except raw, brutal power. It's hard to imagine how someone who used to be a Jedi could become such a monster. Malak and Revan were once both part of the Jedi Order, but they were young and headstrong, and against the wishes of the Council, they went to battle the Mandalorians on the Outer Rim. Something happened out there. Something corrupted them and drew them over to the dark side. Or maybe there was something rotten inside them all along. 
I don't know. They formed an army of ex-Republic soldiers and Jedi who'd fallen to the dark side, with Revan at their head, until Revan was killed by Basila's Jedi strike team. But even that didn't slow the Sith down. Malak just stepped in and assumed Revan's role. He took control of the Sith Armada and resumed the bloody conquest of the Outer Worlds. I'll tell you whatever I can. Taurus was once a magnificent planet-wide metropolis of towering skyscrapers. That was a long time ago. The upper city, where the rich citizens live, is, is still pretty safe. If it wasn't for the Sith occupation and the planet-wide quarantine, it might not even be a bad place to live. But farther down, things have degenerated. The, the lower city is nothing but a slum overrun by swoop bike gangs, waging a never-ending war for control. And the undercity is... Well, that's even worse. The lowest level of Terrace is a wasteland overrun by rat ghouls, mindless, diseased mutants that attack on sight. I've already entered all this info into your data badger. I understand why you want to know more about me. I, I kind of get the feeling we'll be spending a lot of time together over the next while. But this isn't really the best time for long introductions. We should stay focused on the task at hand. There'll be a time for that later. Good idea. We can use this abandoned apartment as a base. And we can probably get some equipment and supplies here in the upper city. Just remember to keep a low profile. I've heard some grim stories about the Dark Jedi interrogation techniques. They say the Force can do terrible things to a mind. It can wipe away your memories and destroy your very identity. But I figure if we don't do anything stupid, we should be okay. I mean, after all, they're, they're looking for Basila, not a couple of grunts like us. All right, soldier, let's move out. Okay. We know some of the basics of the world now. Ah, uh, it's good to be back. Anyways, I'm gonna end this episode here. You know the next race. See you in the next video, my dudes. UH4? Let me hear it. Signing out. <laughs>